For me, it was life altering to have children. It was up there with the greatest things that had happened ever. And that moment, you know, to help someone else have that moment and then what comes after uh, is just, it's great. That's the reward, is like knowing that you've really helped somebody um, achieve their dreams and, and be, feel, feel like they've, they finally they've got a family. They're just so excited and I'm able to call them and tell them, you know, you're pregnant. And, and the screams on the other end, you know, you, it's almost as if they hit the lottery in a sense they have because this is something that they've wanted all, you know, for the last 10 years in some cases. And they're just ecstatic. They're just so happy. It's just an incredible feeling. When you walk into daycare and you go to pick up your kid and he's just like <gasps> running with his hands up, mm, that makes my day. The rest of it. When Mike and I got married, I had already had two children from marriage and I had had my tubes tied. So we knew that we had to get some assistance from a medical uh, facility. Kim Davis was a very um, sort of classic in vitro fertilization patient. And for the Davises, it was interesting because Kim felt badly. Uh, she had had her tubes tied, and then you know, she knew she was perfectly fertile without her tubes being tied. It started to limit our options, you know. Um, you know, at, at first, uh, maybe in vitro fertilization wasn't the, the, the way to go, but once we f figured out that, you know, because of our age, because of my count, because of the tubal ligation, in vitro really was gonna be the best option to try to have us have a baby. I think most of the patients that are sit ac sitting across me, just as you are now, um, come here and they are, nervous. They don't know what I'm going to say. They automatically assume that my first notion is going to be that they need to be doing in vitro fertilization. And they cannot believe that they would be sitting and talking to a doctor about their inability to, to conceive and have a baby and have a family. We think what makes us unique in this area is that we really do a little bit of everything. We're not a one-trick pony. Uh, we do all kinds of infertility. We do what's best for the patient and we're not committed to any one method above any others. Our site at Montefiore is a, is a uh, training program uh, and once a week we get together and we have a group meeting with the fellows, um, the one resident who's rotating with us, nursing staff, the embryology team, the psychologist, um, and we review basically events of the week. Uh, hopefully we can toss around concepts and ideas to uh, get a solution that's best suited for a particular patient whether it's the medical students who are here, or the attendings, or the people, the directors. Everybody can have an equal say in terms of putting in their opinion about patient care. Infertility is incredibly stressful. Treatment can be stressful. It can be like having another job for some of the more invasive things. I was a little anxious because I didn't really know what would have been expected from me. I didn't know what, what they're going to want from me. Um, I didn't know what I was going to have to deal with with the different medications that she was going to have to take. It's your first time. You don't really know what to expect with anything. So you're kind of blind. We started talking to Monty Fiore. And afterwards, we started feeling a little bit better about it. I, I wish everyone would get pregnant who would walk in the door, but there are some patients who may not. And sometimes they need that support. Many people come in with numerous losses in their life. They've been trying to get pregnant for years or they've had miscarriages, maybe they've lost a child. That's part of my job is to sort of help put it in perspective and help them deal with that. Sometimes they need to deal with that before they're ready to go through treatment and try and have another baby um, or to have a baby in the first place. Most of the couples don't want to hear about bad outcomes when they're walking into your office. Uh, they rather just speak very positively um, it is going to work. We're going to take care of you. We found out we were having twins a couple years ago and it was only about a month in between that we found out we were going to lose them. I can tell you for sure that um, we were convinced that we were going to do this once and only once. And having twins and going through the process of losing those twins, it was, it was a little difficult to go through. They are warned of some of the things that can happen, 
but I don't think when anyone walks out the door and they have a fetal heartbeat and they see a growing fetus on an ultrasound, uh, I don't think there's any way you can prepare anyone for that. Our faith brought us through it. Our faith was very important. And once we lost the twins, Kim said, I am not doing this again. I will not do this again. And then it was probably not even a month later, she was like, we need to do this again. And I was like, really? And we did, and we've got Joseph. Just amazing. I mean, my kids are donor egg kids, and anybody who's using donor eggs has been through a lot. They have been through infertility treatment. It is definitely not plan B or C or D. So I think when patients see me, they know that, you know, when I'm sitting on the other side of the desk, I've been where they are. What we're doing here is we're evaluating uh, reasons why you're not getting pregnant, and for good or for worse, in a woman, sometimes it takes the course of a whole month to find out where the problems may lie. They should never expect quick answers. One thing I like to tell them is the, the phrase about, uh, you know, I may not be perfect, but parts of me are excellent. You know, when they're talking about, you know, their ovaries not working or not having enough sperm or having difficulty carrying a baby to term. Um, so part of it is trying to put things in perspective. Perhaps the number one thing for couples is that they need to take stock of their health before they even come to see me or someone in, uh, for infertility, uh, take a look at how healthy you are. Are you smoking cigarettes? Are you drinking too much? What's your weight? Are you, you know, fit? All of those little things, attention to these little things that people neglect, uh, can make a substantial difference in how likely a couple is to get pregnant. It takes a lot for couples to arrive at the decision to seek help. Couples need to know that this is a this is an area where there's a lot more people out there who have problems conceiving than they would think. If you've been trying for a while and it hasn't been successful, there may be some simple things that you can try at home as well, over and above the usual routine things. But if it's not working, come to us to make sure there's nothing that's very simple that can be treated. Try not to fear coming to our offices. There are, there are a lot of simple things that can be done to correct whatever may be the issue. Sometimes people who are dealing with infertility, that's all they're focused on. It becomes their whole world, their whole identity to give, you know, their parents, grandchildren, to become members of society, you know, they're respected as parents. We've been able to provide a service to patients who have infertility but who do not have the means to, um, to pay for infertility services. And these are people who are everyday people, but they just don't have the insurance to pay for infertility treatment and they don't have the financial means. Part of the problem with fertility issues, it becomes everyone keeps it to themselves. There are very few people who openly will talk about the problems. In many communities, it's a stigma. If you're married a certain number of years and you haven't had a child, uh, that can be a problem. Doing more research and knowing maybe some of the complications, not that when you get pregnant you want to hear the bad stuff, but it's important to know that, look, these are some of the complications that can happen. So being educated ahead of, ahead of time is definitely helpful, even if it's bad news. I'd rather hear bad, and all of it actually, than not hear it at all and be surprised. Don't wait, because as you get older, uh, things don't work as well, unfortunately. And, and hopefully, if you take the steps at a younger age, um, you'll have the opportunity to have the family you've been looking for. I think there's nothing like seeing the, uh, the weekly pregnancy sheet that comes out and being able to look at it and recognize the patient's name and go, yes! We have a, a, a unique opportunity to be involved in, in a certain role in a couple's life that I don't think anyone else uh, necessarily uh, has the opportunity to do. On an annual basis, we're getting cards and you know, holiday cards and pictures of the pa of the children growing up, and the and the couples don't forget you. When it does work, it is just such a special, special thing, and there is just no replacement to see a baby, you know, a drooling, smiling baby, you know. When I look at his toes, and he's got my toes, he's got my toes. I wouldn't go anywhere else besides Montefiore. No way. Uh,